this video, I will be covering the rest of the deductions. In the previous video, we have covered the deductions till 80 double DB. So, in today's uh, video, we will start with the next deduction that is deduction 80 E. Right? So, this deduction is in respect of payment of interest on loan taken for higher education. So, if, if an individual has taken an education loan and he is paying interest on the same, he can claim the deduction for that interest paid under section 80E. Now, the in, uh, loan can be taken for the education of the assessee himself or for the education of his or her relatives. Right? So, here the term relative means the spouse and children of the individual or the loan may be taken for any student for whom the individual is the legal guardian. Here, the meaning of higher education means any course after class 12th or its equivalent. So, if you have taken any loan for the education of your own, for the, uh, for assessee's own education or for his or her spouse, children or for whom the assessee is the legal guardian, the interest deduction can be claimed under this section. The loan can be taken from any financial institution or any approved charitable institution. Now, let us discuss how much amount of interest is deductible here. So, entire interest is deductible in the year in which the SSC starts paying the interest on loan and subsequent 7 years. So, to, in total there are 8 assessment years where you can claim the deduction of the interest until the interest is paid in full. Here what we have to keep in mind is the deduction is available for the interest paid. The next section is 80 double D E. So, this section is in respect of interest on loan taken for residential house property. Again, here the deduction can be claimed by an individual. So, if an individual has acquired a residential house property and for the same he has taken a loan from any financial institution or approved charitable institution during the period 1st April 16 to 31st March 17, he can claim the deduction of that interest under section 80 double E provided he does not own any other residential house property on the date on which he has taken the loan. Here, the amount of loan should not exceed rupees 35 lakh, uh, this is the maximum limit and similarly, the value of property should not exceed 50 lakhs. So, if your property is up to rupees 50 lakhs and the amount of loan is up to rupees 35 lakhs, this section becomes applicable. Here, the amount of deduction that can be claimed is rupees 50,000 or the amount of interest on loan whichever is less. So, let us uh, assume if the interest amount is rupees 40,000, so you can claim 40,000, but if it is 60,000, the maximum amount that can be claimed here is rupees 50,000 only. The point that we have to keep in mind here is that the double deduction is not allowed. What does it mean? It means if you have claimed the deduction for this interest in any other section of the Income Tax Act, you cannot claim the same amount of interest under section 80 double E. So, for 80 double E interest on loan taken for residential house property, the maximum interest is rupees 50,000 which can be claimed. Similarly, we have this uh, next section that is 80 double E A. Now, 80 double E A is in respect of interest on loan taken for certain house property. Now, what is the difference between 80 double E and 80 double E A? If an individual is not eligible to claim deduction under section 80 double E, he can claim the deduction under 80 double D A. Right? See, so, conditions again are the same that the loan must have been taken for uh, acquisition of a residential house property, it can be taken from any financial institution, the loan must be sanctioned during the period 1st April 19 to 31st March 2022. So, here lies the difference in our previous uh, slide, the sanction period is 1st April 16 to 31st March 17, but when we talk about this ATDDA, uh, the sanction period is 1st April 19 and 31st March 2022. Again, the condition is that the SSC does not own any residential house property on the date on which he is taking the loan. Here, the value of the property for which the loan is being taken should not exceed rupees 45 lakhs and the amount of deduction that can be claimed here is either the interest payable or the amount of rupees 1 lakh 50,000 whichever is less. So, in the earlier section that limit was rupees 50,000, here the limit is rupees 1 lakh 
50,000 and the deduction shall be allowed for the assessment year 2021 and the subsequent assessment year. Same rule applies here also. If you have already claimed the deduction for interest on loan taken for this property in any other section of the Act, you cannot claim the deduction under section 80EEA. So our next section is 80EEB. This is in respect of interest on loan taken for purchase of electric vehicle. So if you have purchased any electric vehicle, you can claim the deduction for the interest on loan which you are acquired for this purchase. Who can claim the deduction? Again, this deduction can be claimed by an individual. Purpose is you have purchased an electric vehicle from any financial institution during the period 1st April 19 and 31st March 2023. The amount of deduction here is either the interest payable or rupees 150,000 whichever is less and the deduction shall be allowed for the assessment year 2021 and subsequent assessment years. Again, the same rule applies here also. If you have claimed the deduction for this interest under any other provision of the Act, you cannot claim the deduction here under Section 80EB. So, again, I am repeating this uh, 80EB. It, for 80 double EB, you must have purchased an electric vehicle and you have taken the loan for the same and you can claim the deduction of either the amount of interest or rupees 150,000 whichever is lower from assessment year 2021 onwards. Next uh, deduction is 80 G. Now we all know that doing charity uh, contributing some amount for the welfare is considered as a good deed, right? So, in respect of that all, uh, only, this is the deduction, this is the section where you can claim the deduction if you have made any donation to certain funds or charitable institutions, right? Now, under section 80G, the first question is who can claim the deduction? So, here the deduction can be claimed by any taxpayer, be it an individual, HUF, company, so irrespective of the, uh, uh, this, uh, status the individual or the company or HUF they can claim the deduction here for any donation to certain funds or charitable institutions right what should be the mode of payment see here the donation can be made either in the form of cash or in the form of check or you can make online payments uh, uh, by credit card or debit card or by check draft NEFT whatever the mode may be, but the thing is the cash donation exceeding rupees 2000 is not deductible. So, if you have made donation in the form of cash which exceeds rupees 2000, the deduction will not be allowed. The maximum amount that can be donated in the form of cash is rupees 2000. The next point which we have to keep in mind is donation in kind is not eligible. For example, if you have donated uh, clothes or let us say food or medicine, so for that you cannot claim the deduction under section 80G. So here donation can be made in cash or by way of check online payment, but donation in kind is not eligible. Next thing is the amount of deduction. Now for that broadly there are four categories uh, for claiming the amount of deduction. Now what are those four categories I have mentioned in this uh, slide. See. First of all, we will divide these four categories into two parts. Number one is without any qualifying limit and number two is subject to qualifying limit of 10% of the adjusted gross total income. So when we talk about without any qualifying limit, what does it mean? It means that whatever amount you have donated, it can be claimed as deduction under section 80G without any limit. For example, if you have donated rupees 1 lakh, and it falls in the category of without any qualifying limit. So, you can claim the deduction 100% of rupees 1 lakh, 1 lakh will be deducted and if it falls in the category of 50% of amount in it donated, so in that case 1 lakh, 50% of 1 lakh would be 50,000, so you can claim 50,000. 50, the next category is subject to qualifying limit of 10% of adjusted gross total income. So, here is the ceiling where you have to first calculate the adjusted gross total income of the SSC and after calculating the adjusted gross total income, you will find out the 10% of this adjusted GTI and the maximum amount 
of uh, deduction that can be claimed in the second category is 10% of this adjusted GTI. Now the question arises how to calculate this adjusted GTI. So to compute this adjusted GTI you have to follow certain steps. First of all you will calculate your gross total income and from the gross total income the following amounts will be deducted. Number one deductions under chapter 6a except under section 80g. So from uh, section 80c to 80u whatever deductions are there you will reduce the gross total income by uh, those deductions except the deduction under section 80g because we are going to calculate this deduction here only. Next if there are any short term capital gains uh, which are taxable under section 111a they are also deductible. Next. LTCG under section 112 and 112A are also deductible and lastly if there is any income on which income tax is not payable that will also be deducted to calculate the adjusted gross total income. So let us assume if my gross total income after, after deducting all these amounts if my adjusted gross total income comes out to be rupees 10 lakh then I have to calculate 10% of this 10 lakh which will be rupees 1 lakh. So if uh, my donation falls in the category of this maximum ceiling, so for that the maximum ceiling would be rupees 1 lakh and if you have donated 100% of amount donated uh, you can claim the deduction of 1 lakh, if it is 50% of amount donated you can claim the deduction of rupees 50,000. So this is how you have to calculate the adjusted gross total income. Now let us just quickly uh, see the list where these four categories are there. Number one, donation qualifying for 100% deduction without any qualifying limit. And number two is donation qualifying for 50% deduction without any qualifying limit. So here number one, you can see if you have donated any amount to the national defense fund set up by the central government or prime minister national relief fund or prime minister's earthquake relief fund, any national children's fund, national foundation for communal harmony. So if you have donated uh, any amount to these funds, you can claim the deduction of 100% and there is no maximum ceiling. Similarly, if you have donated uh, any amount to this uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Memorial Fund, Prime Minister Drought Relief Fund, Indira Gandhi Memorial Trust, Rajiv Gandhi Foundation, without any qualifying limit you can claim the deduction but your deduction is up to 50% of the amount donated. So if you have donated 1 lakh, we will give you the deduction of 50,000 only. So these are the two categories where there is no maximum ceiling. Last two are where the, there is a ceiling of 10% of the adjusted GTI. So in the third category we have two deductions that is if you have donated any amount to the government or any approved local authority, institution or association for promotion of family planning you can claim deduction of 100% subject to the qualifying limit of 10% of adjusted GTI. And lastly, if you have donated any amount to these five funds which are mentioned in the last category, you can claim the deduction of 50% again subject to qualifying limit of 10% of adjusted gross total income. So this was our section 80G uh, in respect of donation to certain funds. Next is the section 80GG. This deduction is in respect of rent paid and here who can claim the deduction? an individual who is not in receipt of HRA. So first let, of, let us just understand the concept behind this deduction, what is the background. See if you are an employee and you are getting HRA, right? in that case your, if, uh, your salary component includes HRA, you are receiving the HRA from your employer and you are paying rent. You can claim the exemption of this HRA under section 10 subsection 13a. But suppose you are not an employee, you are not getting HRA and you are paying rent. Suppose uh, you are a professional and you are paying rent and you want to claim the deduction of the amount of rent paid by you. So for that you can claim the deduction of that rent under section 80 double G. But there are certain conditions which are required to be fulfilled. Number one, the assessee who pays rent for accommodation occupied by him for residential purpose. Next. The assessee or his or her spouse or minor children or if he is a member of any HUF then in that case the house uh, that person should not own any residential accommodation at the place where he resides or perform his duties of office or employment or carry on his business or profession. 
Next, how much amount is deductible? So here also there are three, you have to calculate three amounts and the least of the following can be claimed as deduction under section 80 double G. What are those three amounts? Number one, the rent paid by the SSC minus 10% of his total income or number two, 25% of his total income or number three, rupees 5,000 per month which makes rupees 60,000 a year. So least of the following three amounts can be claimed as deduction under section 80 double G, right? Now to claim the deduction here, you need to file a declaration in the form 10BA confirming the details of rent paid and fulfillment of all the conditions while filing your return of income. So when we said uh, the rent paid minus 10% of total income, 25% of total income, we need to know how to calculate this total income. So this is nothing but the adjustment made to your gross total income. How will you find it out? Your gross total income will be reduced by all the deductions under section 80C to 80U except deduction under section 80GG. Next, if there are any short term capital gains which are taxable under section 111A, you have to reduce that amount also. And lastly, if you have any long term capital gains that will also be reduced to find out this adjusted total income. Fine. So this is our uh, deduction in respect of rent paid by an SSC who is not receiving the HRA and is actually paying the rent. Next, our deduction is uh, 80 double GA. This is in respect of certain donations for scientific research and rural development. So, if we, see, we have seen 80 G where the donation has been made to certain charitable institutions. Here, we are specifically talking about the donations which have been made for uh, scientific research and for the rural development. But the condition here is an SSC can claim the deduction if he has donated any amount for scientific research and rural development provided he does not have any income under the head profits and gains of business or profession. Because uh, for this we deal with the section 35 under PGBP, right? So if you, are have, if you have donated any amount for scientific research and rural development and you are not having income from PGBP, you can claim the deduction under section 80 double G A. Uh, uh, next, uh, for this, there are certain conditions. Do, uh, donation must be made to an approved research association, university, college or institution to be used for scientific research or rural development or you can also contribute the amount for the purpose of eligible project or scheme under section 35 AC or for the purpose of notified national fund or for rural development or notified urban po poverty eradication fund. Next comes the mode of payment, how you are going to make the donation. Again, you can make the donation in cash or in the form of uh, check, draft, online payment. But if you are uh, donating in cash, again there is a ceiling, up to rupees 2000 the amount is deductible. But if it exceeds 2000 then we are not going to allow the deduction under 80 GGA, it will be restricted to 2000 only. And how much is deductible? Whatever amount you have donated, you can claim the deduction of 100% of the amount under this section 80 double G A. Next is uh, this uh, section 80 G G B and 80 G G C. When we talk about 80 G G B here, uh, this deduction can be claimed only by an Indian company. But when we talk about 80 G G C, deduction can be claimed by any other person, but uh, that person should not be a local authority or an artificial judicial person, which is wholly or full partly funded by the government. Now, when can this deduction can be claimed? This deduction can be claimed if you have contributed any amount or you have given any amount to any political party, right? Here, the mode of payment uh, should be online only. If the contribution is done in the form of cash, the amount is not deductible. Next uh, comes the section deduction in respect of royalty income of authors that is 80 QQB. Here, who can claim the deduction? Only a uh, resident individual can claim the deduction under the section 80 QQB. What are the conditions? Number one, individual is an author or joint author of a book uh, which uh, is a work of literary or artistic or scientific in nature. Next, his gross total income includes royalty or copyright fees in respect of the aforesaid book and lump sum consideration for transfer of any interest in the copyright of the book. Next, deduction should be claimed in the return of income 
and he has to obtain a certificate in form number 10 CCD from the person responsible for paying the income. You have to keep this point in mind that here the royalty income is deductible up to rupees 3 lakhs. So, if uh, your royalty income is 2 lakh 50 thousand, you can claim the deduction here. If it is 3 lakh 50 thousand, it will be restricted to rupees 3 lakhs only. And next point is, if the rate of royalty is more than 15 percent, the excess amount shall be ignored. So, two limits are there. In the case of amount, it is up to rupees 3 lakh and we talk, when we talk about the rate, it should not exceed 15 percent. So, this ATQQB talks about uh, deduction in respect of royalty income of authors. Next is, we have this section a deduction in respect of royalty on patents that is ATRRB. Here again the deduction can be claimed by a resident individual only. He may be a co-owner of the patent. He is in receipt of any income by way of royalty in respect of a registered patent and the deduction should be claimed while filing his return of income. He is also required to furnish a certificate in form number 10 double CE taken from the person from whom he is getting the royalty and here again the amount of deduction is up to rupees 3 lakh. So, these are the two sections that is ATQQB and ATRRB which deals uh, in respect of royalty income. Next we have the section ATTA. Now, ATTA this is the deduction in respect of interest on deposits in saving accounts. So, we all have saving accounts, uh, we all earn some interest income on our saving bank balances, right? So, we can claim the deduction for that interest income under section 80 double TA. Who can claim the deduction? This deduction is available to individual as well as to HUF. And what are the conditions here? Number one is the, your income includes saving account interest with a bank or a cooperative bank or post office. And next, this deduction is not available in the case of a senior citizen who is eligible to claim deduction under section 80 double TB, right? So, you can claim the deduction under this section only if you are not a senior citizen because if you are a senior citizen, we deal uh, with the interest income of senior citizen under section 80 double TB, right? Next is how much amount is deductible? So, here the amount deductible is the amount of your interest income or there is a ceiling of rupees 10,000 whichever is lower. For example, if your interest income is rupees 50,000 and you want to claim the deduction of that interest income, you can maximum amount that can be claimed is rupees 10,000. However, if your interest income is rupees 8,000, you can claim the deduction of rupees 8,000 under this section LTA. And next, this deduction is in addition to the exemption of post office saving bank interest of rupees 3500. Next, uh, this uh, ATTB, I have already uh, discussed this that uh, deduction in respect of interest on deposit in case of senior citizen, the deduction can be claimed under ATTB only by a resident individual who is a senior citizen and whose income includes interest on deposit with a bank or cooperative bank or post office and it may be interest on FD or interest on saving account. So, for uh, when we discuss this ATTA, we talked only about interest on savings account and when we are talking about ATTB, it includes the interest on fixed deposit as well as interest on saving account. This deduction can be claimed by only by a senior citizen who is a resident individual and the amount of deduction is either the amount of interest or rupees 50,000 whichever is lower. So, here we have a higher limit in the previous section the limit was 10,000 here it is 50,000. Again this deduction is in addition to the exemption of post office saving bank interest of rupees 3500. And lastly we have this section which deals with a uh, deduction in the case of a person with disability. So, if the assessee himself is a resident individual and he is suffering from any disability which is more than 40 percent, it may be blindness, no vision, mental illness. So, he can claim the deduction under section ATU and there is a fixed amount of deduction that can be claimed by him which is rupees 75,000. However, if the disability is severe that is if it is more than 80 percent, then there is an enhanced amount of rupees 1,25,000. Uh, the condition here is that he has to, to claim the deduction, he is required to obtain a certificate issued by the medical authority. So, ATU is our last section. 
uh, thank you students happy learning